Okay, so this will be the first video in a series of videos on uh, a modern physics course. And the first concept that I'm going to cover is um, special relativity, which sounds very, very complicated. Um, it's actually not too bad. It is definitely not intuitive, which can throw people off. But uh, hopefully if we work through some of these, they won't be too bad. So before we get into a lot of the cool stuff, let's start with 2.1, which is classical relativity. So this is the first kind of idea we need to go through. And first, let's define some stuff before we get too deep into it. So... What is a theory? A theory of relativity. What's that? What, what does that even mean? Well, one way to think of it is it's a way for observers and kind of from different perspectives to come and compare results of their observation. Um, so I'll go ahead and write that down. So a theory is, or a theory of relativity it's a way for people in different and we'll go over examples of this as well different frames of reference to compare their results to compare the results of their observation. I'll just say results. So th this basically allows for us to express the laws of physics from these different perspectives. And just as an example, let's do this. Um, let's see, do I have yellow? That's probably good enough. Yeah, that'll work. So this is my <laughs> beautifully drawn road. Let's draw this guy. He's kind of facing us. And then this guy has his back turned to us. Which way is right and left? Um, I mean, it depends on your perspective and where you're looking at it. If you're looking from over here with this guy, right, he'll swear to you. This way is right, and this guy, or this way is left. But then if you come to this other side of the road, he'll also swear that this way is left, and this way is right. So that's different perspectives that you're looking at things. Uh, in particular, we're going to be looking at <clears throat> different frames of reference. So uh, observing an event. Perhaps one person's standing still and the other one's driving, right? So let's start with this. Let's start by drawing this out. And then I think it'll be helpful if we talk about it a little bit afterwards and we explain what we're looking at. Uh, so this is Z. This is X. This is Y. And then over here, we're drawing the exact same one. Except we'll call this Z prime, Y prime, X prime. They're different from those. And it's moving. This is moving at a velocity U. So this might be, um, you know, you can come over here and think of this reference frame as somebody standing still. Maybe this is somebody standing on the sidewalk. And then over here, maybe this is someone riding their bike at speed U or driving at speed U. Let's do that one. Um, let's say there's this event here. This guy sees it. This guy driving the car sees it. Let's just say uh, this is Bob they're looking at. Maybe they're, they're staring at Bob. This guy over here, just kind of standing still, sees it. And this guy over here, driving, sees Bob. But... They have kind of these different, and we'll just call this, for example, uh, O. 
I'm going to call this O prime, just so we know the observers. So they see some things similarly, and they see some things differently. Uh, so let's start with this. They both see the same event. They both see Bob, right? They both see the same event. In this case, they both see Bob. That doesn't change. Now let's look at it from O's. That's not the... <laughs> And these aren't derivatives, these are just ways of denoting different coordinate systems. And this is, is the uh, apostrophe. From, oops, it's not an equal sign. So from O's perspective, right, from his perspective, what, do, what does he see? He sees it, the event, so he sees, in this case, Bob, at an X spot, a Y spot, a Z spot, and at a time Z, T. That's what he sees. Uh, however, O prime, O prime, he sees Bob at Bab, <laughs> Bob. He sees Bob at X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and T prime. Okay, and. We'll, well, we'll talk about T in a second here. So he sees it slightly different from where this guy's seeing it. I think that makes sense, right? Uh, if this is, if this car, let's say this car starts right next to where uh, this this guy here is standing. This this car is right next to him. And at time zero, the car starts driving, and eventually passes Bob. Obviously, you guys are going to see it at a different position from basically where you're at. If you let yourself be the center of your own coordinate system, <laughs> which is kind of narcissistic, but that's what we do, um, it's going to look different. Now, the other thing we should mention is O, the guy that's just standing there, he can measure, he can measure and see O prime is moving with speed. We called it U. So with speed, U. Now, O prime measures, he measures it differently. He can measure, he, he can measure O moving at negative U. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, these are vectors. That makes sense. If you're ever in a car and you're driving and you're passing, you know, you pass somebody and you look out the window, it kind of looks like they're just moving really far away from you, right? I mean, yeah, you could be moving or they could be moving away from you. So from their perspective, it just looks like you're going in the opposite direction. That's what this negative does to a vector, right? It flips it. Um... The other thing, so like here you just see it moving in the positive x direction. Here it would be in the negative x direction. I hope that makes sense. The other thing is both O and O prime can test and verify Newton's laws of motion. Now that's something I want to talk about a little bit there. So, for example, if the person standing still checks to see if an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force or an object at rest will stay at rest, he can confirm and verify that. He can do the first, the second, the third. He can do all of it. And they'll be true. And that's pretty obvious. Uh, the car, the guy in the car could do the exact same thing. You know, maybe it's probably not a good idea to do physics while you're driving. But I don't know, maybe his friend's sitting in the passenger seat and F equals MA. Yep, it works. Um, th they both work. And we call those, we say that they're, they're, inertial, they're inertial frames. So Newton's laws work. Um, a few places where 
they would not be inertial. So just a few examples, not inertial frames. Well, let's think about this. Let's say you have um, a car accelerating. And that, that makes sense if you're driving, right? And let's say, or let's say you're, if you've ever flown and the plane's about ready to take off on the runway and you feel it push you back, you feel, you know, that force push you in your chair. That doesn't really make sense. You know, that doesn't make sense. Or if you're driving and, and you, you're, you take a turn, a sharp turn, and the stuff in your car flies on the other side. Well, you know, what's up? We're, you know, we're told an object at motion or an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by an external force. We have pseudo forces there. Uh, Merry-go-rounds where, where, you know, one way to think of it is if you were, I, I like to think of it in terms of Newton's second law, force equals mass times extent. Do you have these pseudo forces? Do you have, do you have stuff like that going on? If you do, they're not inertial frame, reference frames. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the classical. And I hope that makes sense on inertial frames and whatnot. The classical or Galilean transformations. So it turns out this idea of different perspectives that was already thought of a long time ago and they had their own way of looking at it so let's draw our stuff really quick and really quick we'll go ahead and talk about it we're going to assume t equals t prime it makes sense time really shouldn't vary if our if our clocks are all lined up you know as long as we're synchronized it seconds should click the same for uh both observers um and, you know, spoiler alert, it turns out this is not true when you're dealing with things moving very, very fast. In low speeds, you don't need special relativity. If you use it, it just breaks down to the kind of classical versions. But um, when you're dealing with things that go relativistic speed or close to the speed of light, you start seeing serious inaccuracies. Um, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, we're going to assume like we do in the classical sense that t is the same as t prime. So we have our y, our z, our x, and again we'll call this o. And then let's go ahead and do our other one, our z prime, x prime, y prime, this is for o prime, and it's moving it's moving at a velocity u again. Let's say there's something here. There's something at this point. Well, from O prime's point of view, it would be x prime, y prime, z prime, t prime. So something that's moving, maybe, uh, you know, it's a bike. Someone's riding their bike and there's, I don't know, a dog in the basket of the bike or whatever. <clears throat> Think of it how you will. What we want to do is relate what O and O prime seen, how they see and how they're related to each other. Well, first off, we already said T prime is equal to T. It's not. Uh, <laughs> but a few other things that actually are true and make sense is Y prime equals Y and Z prime equals Z. That makes sense. I, the dog isn't jumping like it could, but we're assuming it's not, it's not jumping in or out. It's not jumping at you or away from you. You know, that would be a very interesting <laughs> world to live in. That's not what's happening. It's just moving in one direction. We're assuming the X direction away from you. Uh, but what about X? X is kind of weird, right? X is a little weird because that's the direction we're moving. Well, think of it like this. If you want to know where that point is, we would go x prime plus how far it went, right? This is adjusting for the fact that we have this moving coordinate system. 
that will adjust depending on how far along it is, if you know the speed and you know the time. Or x prime is equal to x. This is a vector minus ut. And that makes sense. It looks like um, it also makes sense looking at it this way, right? From th this origin's point of view, it looks like x is going further away depending on the speed. We talked about that earlier, right? Where from O, o prime's perspective, it looks like O is moving in the negative u direction. So hopefully, hopefully uh, this stuff makes sense. And let me highlight this because they're pretty important. The first three, I think, are pretty kind of common sense. This one, I think, is too. In fact, really, the Galilean transformation is the common sense error, or the common sense answer, just not the right one all the time. Um, so if we take the time derivative for velocity, right, we'll get Vx prime is what? Well, the derivative of position is just velocity. And the t goes away. And then the other ones, it's actually that easy, right? And we can do the exact same thing to get our acceleration. Over here, this is a constant, so we're not worried about that. And we can get our accelerations. And this is, this is kind of the big part. So I'll go ahead and highlight these. So all we did was we took the time derivative to get velocity, and then we did the time derivative of velocity to get our acceleration. Now the important thing here is we see that for both cases, Newton's laws hold. Now how do we know that? We'll look at acceleration. We see that we're going to get f equals ma, right? f equals ma is, is going to be true for both. f equals ma. So that's awesome. Um, as it turns out, this very famous physicist named Einstein came around and had a really interesting thought experiment, and we had a lot of actual experiments uh, done that shows, hey, it turns out at really, really high speeds, this, this transformation doesn't really translate well. Uh, Einstein had a couple... Uh, postulants that he proposed and they had <laughs> very interesting consequences that are a little tedious to understand and you know it, it kind of we, we ended up getting the Lorenz transformations which we'll talk about in a future video which can kind of give us this transformation when we're dealing with say a photon uh, so that's what's going to come up it's very interesting and hopefully I'll be able to get to those soon um, and in the next video, I think I'll actually work through some practice problems with these. So hopefully you guys enjoyed.